The following program is a public access production. Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. Welcome to the Dave Perez Show. I'm Dave Perez and I'm very happy you joined us. We have a lot in store for this show, so let's get started. Awesome, awesome event tonight where, you know, actually it's my honor and privilege to have these guys on my show. Uh, they are Hot Rocks. Here we are. Members of the band. Uh, don't be shy, guys. You can say hi. Um, they are one of the, they are the premier cover band for the Rolling Stones. They were ranked in the top five uh, cover band Chicagoland area by Nightlife Magazine. I got that one right. And uh, actually, you know what? You, you guys also have a great harpist on this team as well, right? We do. That's right. He, oh, yes. Yes, is he here with us today right he, now? Uh, I went home to get his spotlight. Ah, see, he, he's got a spotlight. Where <laughs> he actually, somebody runs around, chases him with the spotlight. And then we have another person with a fly swatter also. That sounds like Max's girlfriend. Um, but you know what, let's get our names real quick from uh, left to right. You are? I'm Carmi Zach. Joe Wayman. Chris Minardi. Paul Malley. Now let's go right to left. Who do you perform, performing wise? I am uh, the piano player. I'm Stu, Ian Stewart. Don't shoot him, he's only the piano player. <laughs> I'm the guitar player, Key, I, uh, I am the Keith, I guess you'd call me. So it's your birthday today? Uh, sure. All right, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Charlie Watts, drummer. Uh, Bill Wyman, Daryl Jones, bass. There you go. And you know me, I'm Dave Perez. You know, I got a few questions for you guys, pretty simple ones. Basically, what was some of the musical influences that you guys had growing up? Rolling Stones. Naturally. Oh, hello. <laughs> well, I uh, myself, uh, I was into the soul thing, like Temptations, Four Tops. Okay. Yeah. Soul, rhythm, and blues. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything that the Beatles uh, really woke me up when I was a kid, and, and from there it went on with the Stones and everybody. Rock and roll. Uh, banana splits. <laughs> <laughs> and Burt Baccarat. There you go. <laughs> Banana splits. Well, you know, another question would be then, what is like some of the most exciting places you guys performed? What is like one of your favorite places to perform? Oh, boy. Besides on the Dave Perez show. Uh, <laughs> we played at the Broken Oar last summer. The Broken <laughs> what? The Broken Oar. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard an H before that. Yeah, but no, and no, 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 I, I don't know. I don't <laughs> come out that way. It was uh, the best no, place the you H, ever played the at? The H is silent. Well, you know what? Let's, I'll be devil's advocate. What was one of the worst places you've ever played at? Carmies. Carmies. <laughs> oh my God. Carmies in North Lake. Yeah. See, I, that's how long I followed you guys because I know. Well, it used to be Carmies, but <laughs> they, got, they got that you one out the of the place. way before I joined. The <laughs> there you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, what age did you guys get started musically? Oh gosh, I, I started singing in school and grammar school, you know, in the choirs and stuff, and kind of went from there. Yourself? Yeah, myself. Uh, probably fifth grade, I started uh, playing drums, and uh, so. Ah, okay. 
quite a while. Too early to remember. I was probably three or four. My sister brought home 45s and we danced and we sang together. Wow. Probably around seven or eight I was at my aunt's house playing on her piano during the Christmas party. So. Ah, see, don't shoot the piano player. There's a person, a very good friend of mine, Lynn, and I asked her, you know, what questions should I ask you guys? Oh, we got another member here. Uh-oh. Hey, it's Bon Jovi. <laughs> he went to get his hat cut. <laughs> and she asked me, she goes, you know what, ask him if there were a drink, what would, what would they be if they were a drink? Hey, people on the bus, come and check out the show. No? Yeah. Tomorrow? Oh, she, she wants to. She knows. <laughs> If we were a drink, what would we do? Well, yeah, if you were a drink, what would you guys be? Bacardi and Coke, come on. Oh, uh, boy, we got a Bacardi and Coke. McCartney, <laughs> McCartney and Coke. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Very good, Andrea. I, I'm, I'm with Andrea, Long Island Ice Tea. Big oh, now, now Andrea wants to get into the... Uh, take a shot of her again. She was shy before. There you go. I think, you know what, you guys should be sangria because it's a lot of everything and something very good at the end. So very fruity. That, that was really like... Uh, hey, hey, that, <laughs> as he's standing behind him. But... <laughs> okay, can you, can you guys tell us about what's coming up for the future? Other, other concerts, other gigs? Um, I'm sure there's a website they can reach you guys at. Yes, there is. Carmi will explain that. Oh, there's a website? Uh, uh, it's uh, hotrocksband.com. Hamana, hamana, hamana. Well, anything you'd like to tell the audience as far as... Uh, we love you. Well, okay, yeah, well. We just come, come out us. and check us out. Ferrari for Christmas. I got the best gig around because I don't have to perform. I just sit back, have a drink, and watch you guys play. And you know what? We're going to follow them inside and see what they're doing inside. So come on, let's do type of trouble we're going to get into. We're going to try to squeak through this way and catch part of the other members from the band that was prior because I told Mick I would, and I believe the rest of the band, um, as you saw on stage, the transformation they had from point A to point B. So, come on in. Okay, someone was playing an instrument over here. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. What did I do now? Oh, uh, well, we're just trying to catch people, seeing what they want to say. You know, get backstage, get get behind the scenes type of stuff, you know? It's always cool. You got to peek out through the curtain, man. It's a great view. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be up here playing the guitar with you guys. I can sing. I can sing. I can sing. I don't know. I, I can carry a tune. I can carry it away. <laughs> no, I'm not buying it, man. Now, you're the guitar player, correct? Kind of. Okay, let's get a picture of his guitars here. Which one is your favorite? Uh, actually, the junior's been with me for like, you know, umpteen years, man, forever. Oh, wow. They're all my favorites, man. I love playing guitar. How long have you been playing guitar? Yeah, 40 some years, 40, 66 to whatever now, I don't know, for over wow. 40 years, you know? Now, see, are guys like females, can I ask you your age and you're, uh, will you tell me? I'm going to be 60 next month, man. 60? See, they're kind of quiet though, right? Man? Oh, <laughs> don't let it get out. Don't let anybody know. Look at that. <laughs> I was going to say 40. I'm 50. Well, thanks, man. I'm 50, so come on, man. When I get, uh, I hope I get to that 60. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get back here so we can get a picture of us. Yeah. Here we go, here we rock go. and roll. Hey, yeah. <laughs> or isn't it like something like this? Or yeah. Put whatever. your tongue out or something. I let Mick do that. He knows <laughs> yeah, how to Mick's do it. The tongue guy. <laughs> he hey, is. well, I'm glad someone thinks so. <laughs> now, how long have you been playing drums? Me, uh, yeah, close to 50 years almost, I think. Wow. Okay. Now I gotta ask you too. How old are you? I'm 60, 60. Holy so, smoke, 60. so yeah, yeah. We got a little bit of age be uh, between us all. So, what am I doing We're wrong? Rock and roller. So, you know, I mean, you know, there's two things kids want to be growing up. They wanted to be in a rock and roll band, and they wanted to play baseball. I mean, you know. My mom wouldn't let me play baseball, so here I am. Yeah. Well, like I said earlier, we're so poor. If I wasn't a boy, if I wasn't born a boy, I'd have nothing to play with. I'm going to let you do your thing. All right, dude. Um, any favorite song that you like to play on drums? Uh, Stone song? Or, yes. Uh, and otherwise. Oh, otherwise? Well, I'm in a vast... Uh, I'm like a hard rocker. I'm a Zeppelin guy. Rock and Rush, and Rush. Dream Rush. Theater, you know, Pink Floyd, so... So, you know, this, what, what one song would you love to do on drums? Oh, Jesus. Let me think. <laughs> uh, I would like to do... I don't know. That's a tough question. Well, you know what? I'm going to ask you again because I know you're busy and you got to do what you got to do. But I'm going to come back at some point and I'm going to ask you again. All right. I'll think about it. <laughs> All right. Great. Thanks.
of the Des Plaines Theater. And when the owner sees this, he'll probably yell, but that's okay, because we have permission to film. So, woohoo! Go Dave! Welcome to the Dave Pro Show. You know what, I'm honored to introduce the next guest I have. Uh, you've seen her on VH1's Mob Wife Chicago. Let's welcome Nora Swice. Hey! How are you, dear? What's up, buddy? All the way from the way, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Like I said, you know, I'm very lucky to have you here tonight. And I understand that you've been taping and flying around from New York City all the way to Miami, all the way to L.A., and now back here, as a matter of fact. You just flew on in. I, I was like a bird in the wing. I just landed. But anyway. Well, well, with that being said, you know what? Let's get to the basics. Tell, us, tell me about, tell the audience about your G, uh, Susan G. Coleman event that's coming up. Well, we have an event on the 17th. It's like my fourth event. Um, I did one in Miami. Uh, it's going to New York and the Bronx and then back to L.A. Uh, you know, my, both my parents had breast cancer. No, had cancer. And, you know, I, I, it's in my heart and my soul. And like you know, we grew up. So, you know, after Mob Wife's came, I want to get connected with Susan G. Coleman. And we've raised a lot of money yet. And the next event on the 17th is going to be live. And, so do it, let's do it. Excellent, excellent. You know what? I want to get a little bit of shot of this. This is the poster of her event. If I can hold it up without the wind being... There we go. The 17th at Flight 112. That's in Elmhurst, Illinois. So... 79. That's right. And I'll be actually co-hosting it and filming it as well. I know. I love you. <laughs> okay, let's move on though with this now because we've got a lot to talk about. Um, so, I mean, you come up and, you know, you've been doing the Mob Wives and such. And the one thing I, I, I knew about you when I first met you is that you're very approachable. You know, some people might think that Hollywood people are standoffish, but you're always happy to take a picture and an autograph. Uh, do you find people kind of afraid to come up to you and ask for one, or is it you, you find just the opposite of that? No, actually, since I did Mob Wives, I love it. From, you know, I went to Great America, I had my bathing suit on, and... I went to Nora Pavey Pier, and they're like, oh my God, are you, you look just like Nora and Chicago Mob Wives, but you know what, this is her, standing so right here. <laughs> you know what, the best part of doing this show was greeting all my fans and my people, because you know me, I'm a, I love people. That's right. And, and I'm you, so happy to meet them. And you know what, you kind of ran into the next question I was going to ask you, Mob Wives. You know, was it fun to shoot? Uh, you know, what do you, what, do you have TV in the future ahead of you? Uh, I have to take the fifth on that one. I just came in from LA. I have a book deal signed. My wine, the German, will be coming out shortly. Um, and hopefully, you know, I have another reality show going up in LA. And exactly. It is what it is. Well, you know what? Now you just said another subject I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about uh, you're becoming an author. 
and you have a wine coming out. Can you tell us a little bit about the book and the wine? The book is an autobiography of my life of growing up in the mob. Well, really, allegedly. You know, my dad was known as the most notorious hitman in the city of Chicago. Or actually, he's a legend. Frank the German Schweiss, the most notorious hitman. So I created a wine in my honor of the German, and it's going to be the most notorious. Instead of that, we're going to do the exquisite Pinot Noir. Okay. And you know what? That's what it's about. Well, you know what? I'd like to have a case when it's ready, but now you're also kind of an author. You're writing a book as well. Absolutely. It's about my life. It's about what I went through growing up. I mean, my dad was the best person in the world, and everybody says he was the most notorious hitman, allegedly. So we'll find out. We'll have to read about it in my book. Well, once again, I like to have the book as well as the wine. Um, what's in the future for you uh, as, as far as you have so many things going on? Now, you have an event coming up as well as Flight 112, but you have something coming up in uh, New York City as well. I'm leaving for the Bronx, and uh, there's going to be a lot of big stars there as well, reality. Uh, you know, Staten Island is where New York started, Mob Wives, so I'm going out there to go with everybody out. Pauly Cigars, G Fella, we're all going out there. Um, and as well, you know, I've been the last three years, I've been in school and I finished my master's in business. So, you know, there's a lot of things coming up in the future that Mob Wives brought me to. And the most important thing right now is the cancer event. And I really thank you for doing this live because it's a wonderful cause and it'll save a lot of women's lives. Well, in, in ending, I'd like to ask one more thing. Where do you see yourself five years from now? You, do you want to be in film, TV? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Because it looks like you have a book, a book deal going, a wine being made. You know, would you want to be an entrepreneur, businesswoman more so, or would you like to stay on TV as well? Actually, I'm going to have my own company, the German LLC. My book will be out, and you know what? Maybe the movie will come out. You never know. Oh, well, I mean, I didn't look joy for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you know what? I tell you what, I, I would love to, uh, you know, talk the rest of the evening, but unfortunately, we're kind of short on time. But I know I'm going to be with you again at Flight 112 for your event next uh, Saturday, yes. the 17th at 7 to 9 p.m. And it was a pleasure having you on the show, Thank and you. I hope you come back soon. Oh, we will be, and uh, I can't wait till next weekend. I'll let you know about New York. Excellent. Thank you very Thank much you. for being here. Thank you. Hey, welcome back to the Dave Perez Show. Now, the next guest I'm going to have is one of the cast members as well. She's a very funny person. She's known as Leslie Lee, the queen bee of comedy. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. They do call me the queen bee of comedy. But tonight, I feel like rock and roll. Seems rip apart, and you're to blame, darling. You give Spanks a bad name. Yeah. A perfect shape is what they sell. You wanted thin thighs, now you're wrapped up in hell. You pulled and you tugged so carefully. But fashion's a prison, and you can't break free. Whoa, you got a loaded bum. Bum 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 Whoa, the fat's got nowhere to run Elastic can't save you, the damage is done Seems rip apart and you're to blame Darling, you give Spanx a bad name My diet's to lose, all you do is gain Honey, you give Spanx a bad name You've got whipped cream upon your lips a fork's never far from your fingertips. A size 16 has passed you by. That last chocolate chip was your first help me cry. Whoa, running should be fun. Run, 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 Whoa, these weights weigh a ton. There's no one to spot you. The treadmill has won. Seems through a pot. And you're to blame, darling, you give Spanx a bad name. You'll never be a bikini dame, honey, you give Spanx a bad name. You give Spanx a bad name. Rock and roll! Let's move this out of the way, I don't think I can hide behind it, do you? So, what do you think about the wig, huh? You like it? 
I feel kind of like the uh, bastard love child of Bo Derek and Rick James right now. Uh, actually, this is a shout out to my style icon, Lady Gaga. Love her. They call me Lady Gag Gag. You get a load of my poker face in a blue one piece bathing suit, you're gonna throw up all of your disco stick. Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my Nicki Minaj a trois. Yeah, I came down and I was getting ready for the show and I come down and I asked the old man, you know, I says, what do you think? I says, what does this say to you? Edgy rocker chick or crazy middle-aged broad in a cheap wig. And uh, he said, you know, a little bit of both. And that's why I love him. We've been together 26 years off and on. Thank you. Yeah, he'd climb on. I'd mention marriage, he'd take off. Uh, you know, when you've been together a long time, your friends always have the same question. What's your secret? And I tell them, well, I guess it's that when we were younger, we could make each other hot just by taking our clothes off, you know? And now, all these years later, we make each other laugh. Still, just by taking our clothes off. So nothing's really changed. Uh, don't worry, I won't be taking anything off tonight because I know the camera adds 10 pounds, right? That's why I only strip on the radio. If, if I'm dripping, I, I'm sorry, but I just shower with my clothes on. I don't even want to see myself naked, you know? I, I shower because I'm so excited to be part of the first Dave Perez show. And I guess I should start by saying thank you. Thank you, I'd like to thank Dave for having me. And I'd like to thank the little people. But I hate them. I, I'm here for the same reason that all these other fabulous performers are tonight. I'm waiting for my big break. Sadly, at my age, it'll probably be my hip. Uh, that's right, I'm old, I'm old. I'm an old hippie. And the good thing about being an old hippie you have to burn incense anymore. No, I found the Ben Gay pretty much covers up the smell of the pot. I, I, I don't have an eating disorder. I just had the munchies since 1972. That's why I, I know I need, I need to lose weight. I need to get in shape. My boyfriend came home the other day with a brochure from this export fitness. Are you familiar with this place? To open 24 hours a day. Like I'm gonna feel more like working out at say, 2 a.m. I says, honey, I don't like to exercise. Let me tell you why. It makes me sweaty and out of breath. And it bores the crap out of me. If I wanted that, I'd come home and have sex with you. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. I, but I am starting a new workout program tomorrow, the Lord's Day. It's religion-based, maybe you've heard of it. Pontius Pilates. I hear it's how Mary lost the baby weight. Uh, which is uh, funny, I can't seem to lose the baby weight and it's the darndest thing because I've never been pregnant. <laughs> My name is Leslie Lee. I'll be back later. And now more of the Dave Perez Show. <laughs> hey, come on, let me see one for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to take a break for a few minutes and
You might want to hurry. You don't want to be late for your first day in college. I'm ready. There we go. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. Uh, did you brush your teeth? Yes. You had breakfast? Yes. Now, what's the one thing we have to remember about the world? It's not safe. Good. Are you sure you want to go? Maybe you can start next semester. Yes, Dad. I'm ready now. I'll be fine. I promise. I promise. I got an hour until I start work. Let me drive you. I know you think I can't do this, but I can. I don't see myself as having a disability. I see myself as being different. Why can't you see that? Why can't you see that it'll be okay? How do you know that, Eric? Something might happen to you. You're not like the other kids. I can't lose you, Eric. I need to know you're safe. How do I know you're okay? What you don't know, you just have to believe that I am. And just trust me when I say I can do it. Like your mom. I believe you, son. You better hurry or you're gonna be late. Hey, don't forget to look both ways before crossing the street. Dad. <laughs> My father taught me for years to be a strong man, hold back my tears. My mother taught me love, and she told me I will fight for you. La vecinita del frente